Welcome to the exhibition Willem van der Velde and Son at the National Maritime Museum at Schevert Museum in Amsterdam. My name is Jeroen van der Vliet. I'm head of collections and also the curator for this exhibition. I'll give you a private tour and tell you more about these two marine artists, both called Willem van der Velde, and tell you something. Why are they the best painters in the 17th century when it comes to painting the sea and ships? Our story, of course, begins with Willem van der Velde the Elder. And this is where you can actually see him. This is Van der Velde the Elder at a later age. He's wearing a wig, which was customary at the English court where he later worked. Unfortunately, we don't know much about the early years of Van der Velde the Elder. Did he learn to draw himself? Or did he get some lessons? Was he a sailor? Or was he an artist from the first? What we do know, around 1640, his name can be found on a print here of the Battle of the Downs in Dunkirk. The print has been made by an Amsterdam publisher showing a depiction of Lieutenant Admiral Martin Tromp, the Battle of the Downs and Dunkirk, and a poem written by Caspar Baleus, an Amsterdam poet. And over here in the corner, you see one of the first signatures used by Willem van der Velde, indicating that he made the depiction of the Battle of the Downs. Van der Velde is famous for his ship portraits. And over here we see several different ways of how to depict a ship. The most important part, of course, in a ship portrait was to get both the side of the ship and also the stern. Because especially with Dutch ships, on the stern you would find a depiction of the name of the ship. In this case, the Vergulde Zonne, the Gilded Sun. Another thing that made Van der Velde famous was he was actually the first marine artist to sail with a war fleet and sketch a battle from nearby. So not only was he a marine artist, he was also an abetted journalist. Over here we can actually see him making a drawing of the Battle of Ter Heide, also called the Battle of Scheveningen. Later on I'll show you more examples where he actually has depicted himself in a pen painting. As an embedded journalist, he makes sketches on board of the ship. But of course, in the end, his pen paintings he made while working in the studio. And I'll give you some examples of what he actually made when he had seen these naval battles. Here you have a bird's eye view of the Battle of Newport, also known as the Battle of the Gabbard, where Van der Velde has chosen a bird's eye view of the battle showing you how many ships were actually involved. And as you can look closely, you can see all ships are fighting their own individual battles. In another case, Van der Velde was commissioned because many people wanted to have a paint painting made by Van der Velde, the Admiralty, captains, but also admirals. For instance, Cornelis Tromp ordered three pen paintings to be made of actions made by both his father and himself. And over here we can see the Battle of Livorno, also called the Battle of Leghorn, where you can see the ship of Cornelius Tromp. And the interesting thing is that the painting still has the original family crest of the family Tromp. Later on, Van der Velde makes up a list. We call it the list of pictures. In it, in English, he is listing all the pen paintings he has made and for whom he has made them. And here at the top, we can see the fight before Leghorn between the Dutch and the English. That is the painting we have just seen. I promised you a cameo where Van der Velde actually shows himself being in his little galliot. And over here, we can see him again making sketches of the Battle of the Sound. Can you imagine the horror? It is really nearby where he actually is. Here at the Battle of Bergen, Van der Velde ended up with a little bit of a problem. He was promised a sea battle, but when he arrived, it had already taken place. 
So what he did was make some sketches of the environment and also of the Dutch ships that were still there, but the English ships had already left Bergen in Norway. In the end, he made a pen painting and drew in some very large clouds and a little bit blurred in the back are the English ships that he had never seen in real life. Are you wondering how he actually made such detailed drawings? Well, of course, he didn't do it during a naval battle. In the end, most of his drawings were made while the ships were in port, and he had all the time of the world to make a really detailed sketch. For instance, of this warship and also of this one. Look at the detail of this one. It shows the ship, the Burgt of Leiden. In the town of Leiden, there's a castle on a hill and you can see a depiction on the ship as well. Van der Velde really made quite a number of these drawings. In the end, the Van der Velde's made 800 paintings and more than 2,500 drawings. Van der Velde was not the first marine artist in the Netherlands. There were many before him and even after him. What it made him special was, of course, his detail, his accuracy, the fact that he was in the battle himself. Over here, and many of these paintings come from our own collection, you can see many of the other uh, marine artists, competitors, uh, people who followed Van der Velde. Um, and one painting in particular would like to show you. This is made by Simon de Vlieger, another famous marine artist in the Netherlands. You can see the ships lying at anchor, sailing away, and people on the quayside being busy with whatever they do. And it is this kind of activity that we also see later on in someone else's work. Because this is the work by the master, Simon de Vlieger, but now we get to see how much his pupil, Willem van der Velde the Younger, actually copied in his early work. And here he is, Willem van der Velde the Younger, on a portrait made by Lodewijk van der Helst. Here we can see the marine artist, and he's pointing his finger to a drawing. And the interesting thing is that the drawing is not by van der Velde the Younger, is actually made by his father. And that is interesting because many of the paintings Willem van der Velde the Younger made were based on sketches made by his father. Another indication that they were a really close family business. The family business was doing quite all right in the 60s, 70s, until the advent of the war with the French and the English and the Germans in 1672. This is called the Rampjaar, the disaster year for the Dutch Republic. For the Van der Velders it would mean more naval battles, but instead the Dutch art market collapsed. Vermeer even went bankrupt within months. So for the Van der Velders the question was, how are we going to make money? Luckily, the English king had invited Dutch artists and artisans to come over and work at his court. And so the Van der Velders made a bold move. They moved to England and started working for the English king, Charles II. He gave them a studio right here, a queen's house. This was the place where the studio was actually located. Nowadays, this is part of the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, of which we owe so many of the loans we can now show of the Van der Velders. So the Van der Velders, from 1672 onwards, were working for a royal salary, making paintings and drawings of largely English battles, English victories. For instance, these drawings show you the Van der Velde being witness of a visit by the English king to the fleet, but also making designs of paintings for naval battles between the English and the French. When they were working for the English king, they also got very English commissions. So they were asked to make drawings and paintings of battles that were lost by the Dutch. So a depiction of this 
you wouldn't see uh, being commissioned when they were working in the Netherlands. This shows you the burning of 300 ships. It's called Holmes Bonfire. It was commissioned by the English king and is still in their collection. Well, this brings me to one of my most favorite galleries. The one about the calms, breezes and storms. Because this is a genre for which Van der Velde the Younger is most famous. On one hand, the calms, where you see ships at anchor, at rest even. But still there's a lot of activity going on, on the boats and the ships, on the quayside, much as we saw by his master, Simon de Vlieger. On the other hand, we see the storms, where we really have this question, will the ship survive? Already the spars break off, the waves are huge, and of course the clouds are more than threatening. Of course we have favorites like the gust from the Rijksmuseum, or here, three ships in a gale. On the other hand, we find these calms, as in this case, where we have an English warship lying at anchor at a roadstead. At first, that is the entire story, you think. But when you look closely, you see all kinds of details. You see some officers chatting at the stern. You can see someone standing at the anchor, and he gets help or directions from three others. And then when you look up, you see just two boys enjoying the view, as we do today. Also, one of my favorites are the smaller paintings made by Van der Velde the Younger. Of course, this is something that you could make in your studio, but the interesting thing is that many of these paintings ended up in private collections. And it is great to have many of these paintings brought together in this exhibition. This is another special one, one I really like because of its small stories. Over here we can see some ships on a calm day. There is no sailing to do. So men are drying the sails and actually they're starting a water fight. A very important person doesn't want his socks to get wet, so he's carried by another one through the water. And now back to the swimmers, because you could almost think that the clothes drying in the rigging are theirs. An exhibition in the Scheefart Museum couldn't be complete without a portrait of Michiel de Ruiter, of course. But this is an interesting thing. Because when the painting was made, Ferdinand Bol was commissioned to make a portrait painting of Michiel de Ruiter. But he's very good in painting people, but not so much in painting ships. So Bol painted de Ruiter, but asked Willem van der Velde de Younger to make a portrait of his ship, the Seven Provinces. And the interesting thing is that in this painting, in the collection from the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, you can still see the stitch line where the canvas showing the portrait of the seven provinces was stitched into the canvas showing the portrait of the Ruiter. Interestingly, when we talk about the Van der Velders, in the Dutch context they are considered the pinnacle of Dutch marine painting, whereas in Britain they are considered at the start of what becomes the British school of marine artists. A lot has to do with Van der Velde the Younger and his influence on marine artists in Britain in the 18th and 19th century. Over here you can see our own copy of the Battle of the Tessel, made by Van der Velde the Younger. You can see the flagship, the Golden Lion, storming into the battle. And you can see all the other ships portraying the battle. But look closely. The ship is firing its cannon from both sides. And also you can see a black plume of smoke. Even the clouds are interesting. The light comes from the left corner. And you can see a diagonal of the clouds, mostly, of course, from the firing of the guns. Over here is a painting made by a British artist, Samuel Scott, about 75 years later. And Scott portrays a battle of Lord Anson at Cape Finisterre. But his ship is being portrayed in the same way as the Golden Lion of Cornelius Tromp. Actually, you can see that it's firing the cannons from both sides as well, and the dark plume, and even the light comes from the same way. 
So it is as if it's a mirror image of the Battle of the Tessel. For this commission, Willem van der Velde the Younger actually returned briefly to Amsterdam as he worked on a large scale painting showing the port, especially made for the commissioners of the port and cranes, who had their assembly room right here at Schreierstoren. And actually, this painting was at Schreierstoren on display until 1808. Again, we see the Golden Lion of Cornelius Tromp, his flagship. But what really brings the circle around is that three and a half centuries after this painting has been made, it's now on display at the former naval arsenal, now the Scheefaert Museum in Amsterdam. For dessert, I want to show you something special. It's two of the Solbay tapestries that are now for the first time on display. These are two of the Solbay tapestries. The series includes six tapestries made for the English king Charles II. Willem van der Velde, the elder, was an eyewitness to the battle. It was his last battle where he sailed with the Dutch fleet before he moved to England. The Battle of Sol Bay between the English, the French and the Dutch was undecided. When van der Velde started working for the English king later that year, the first commission he got was to make a design for six tapestries depicting the Battle of Sol Bay. Van der Velde the Elder was happy to comply because he, of course, was a witness to this battle, but he had one little problem. He was on the Dutch side, not on the English side of the battle. This was something that could be remedied according to King Charles II, because his brother, James, the Duke of York, was the commander of the British fleet at Sol Bay. We can actually see the ship of the Duke of York right here with the royal standard. We can also see that the sails are already riddled with holes from cannonballs. This tapestry shows you the second day of the battle. A second day of the battle is an interesting thing, of course, because the Battle of Sol Bay only took one day. This is the morning after. The ships are in line of battle but the battle itself never took place. The other tapestry shows you the day before, the day of the actual battle. And this is a very cataclysmic moment in time where the Royal James, the flagship of the Blue Squadron of the English, is set alight by a fire ship from the Dutch. And we see the Royal James burning and the English and the Dutch ship fighting the Battle of Sol Bay, and almost poetically they sail towards the horizon, and this is the end of the actual battle. Well, this really brings us to the end of the exhibition Willem van der Velde and Son. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon in the museum. <laughs>